Good morning, welcome to another mobilization video. Today we're going to be looking again at the elbow and down into the forearm. So we're going to be doing some passive accessory mobilizations. Working on the humero ulnar joint, we're going to start off with an AP mobilization, so anterior to posterior. The positioning of this will vary greatly depending upon your patient and what you're trying to achieve. So by all means, feel free to use um, cushions and towels, pillows, whatever you need to support their arm in the position that best suits the mobilization you want to perform. This morning what we're going to do is we're going to be looking to do this towards extension. So what I'm going to be doing is supporting the humerus just here, so we're supporting the proximal bone. And then the ulna, on the medial side here, we're going to be performing our mobilization. A lot of this depends upon your grip strength, really, as to how you do it. So feel free to modify it so that it suits your hands and your handling. Some people can do the mobilization with their thumb. I think that does leave your thumb quite exposed. And in general, um, it can be a relatively weak method of doing it. Whereas if you use your first metacarpal, you can get quite a lot of force down from your forearm. So supporting the humerus here, and I'm supporting their, their arm against my body. As I say, some people will prefer to use pillows and cushions, etc., but I like to have a bit more control of the arm if I can. So onto here, the force is going to be coming through from there. So support and support, and my fingers underneath are then just also feeling the olecranum and just along the border of the ulna so that I've got it in my hand. So once we've got it in this position here, we can then do our um, test movements, so we can apply a force, picking up into resistance, and then we can go a bit more into resistance, and then feel for the end of range. Obviously with our grade ones, we're looking at a very, very light motion. A lot of your pressure really is coming off as opposed to pressing in. Grade two, Make that movement a little bit larger. Really taking up a lot of the soft tissue slack, really. Grade three, we apply a lot more pressure now into resistance and out of resistance. And then grade four, feeling towards the end of range, maintaining resistance and then very small oscillations in and out. For PA, we can use a similar handling where we can then pull up from above and then block the humerus from on top. So now what I'm doing is using underneath to grip, squeeze it into my hand so that essentially I'm gripping like this and then lifting. So we can stabilize support and then pull upwards in our test movement and then perform the technique. Grade one, just pulling up. Grade two, you can see a little bit more motion in my arm. Grade three, and grade four. Now obviously what I've done is done these techniques all in the same position of flexion extension. This is a relatively nice loose pack position, so you'll probably get more motion, especially if you're doing this for the assessment to show someone. But the effectiveness on the, on the patient, you may want to vary the level of flexion and extension that you'd be doing it in, depending upon what tissues you're trying to work on. An alternative for the PA as well, especially when you start to get up into a slightly more flex position, is to try and get behind the, the elbow in performing your um, PA. So remember the PA is relative to the ulna at whatever range it's in. Um, you, can, you could argue that this actually starts to become a longitudinal. I'll leave that open for discussions. Please feel free to have that in the comments section. So if we're going to be doing that PA this way, what we're going to do is put the ulna just in here between the thenar and hypothenar eminence. Grip onto radius and ulna so that as I apply my pressure it just doesn't try to flex. Instead, as I apply the pressure, I can keep the arm in that position. And we can either hold on to the humerus here to apply a technique, or if you prefer, you can hold on to the shoulder 
up from above. I prefer holding here, but I do know some patients don't like it when you're really gripping around their arm. Okay, so we can perform our PA in this position. You can see the different grades occurring. You will get a small amount of flexion and extension. Now I'm impossible to stop that. For our longitudinal uh, cordad, what we're going to do is take the arm across the body, holding on to the humerus just from above, and we're going to use the electron now and go down the shaft of the ulna. Again, with our electron here, we're just going to put it between the um, thena and hyperthena eminence, nice little groove just in there. Then we can use the rest of our fingers just to feel onto the ulna. Get ourselves in a nice strong position and then we can apply the pressure down through the ulna. Test movement there, grade one, grade two, grade three, and grade four. Of course, again, we can vary the amount of flexion and extension when applying that technique. For superior radio oil on the passive accessories, we're going, to, we're going to be looking today at an AP and a PA, a longitudinal cordad and a longitudinal kephalad. So we start with the AP. We need to stabilise the ulna, so which I'm going to do with my left hand just underneath also got my index finger just onto the humerus, but then the rest of my fingers are on the ulna and supporting in here. Bare hand and arm will be nice and relaxed, and then we're going to come onto the radius along here. Now, again, we're going to be using our um, first metacarpal for the pressure. As I say, some people might have a strong enough thumb. I always find it's better just to use this part of the hand. So, what we're going to do is put our hand just in here, like that. So this is where the pressure is going to be applied. The other fingers just come round the back and grip onto the back of the radius. If you grip it like that and then perform the mobilisation, you'll feel so much more control of the bone. Whereas if you do it like that, you'll just feel you're pressing on something. So here and here, and we're going to apply our pressure down. So test movement. Back off, and then we can do a grade one, grade two, just taking up the slack, their hand and arm will naturally start to try to supinate, that's okay. Grade three, coming into and out of resistance, and then grade four, fully in resistance towards the end of range, small amplitude. For PA, so PA is coming this way, what we're going to do is we're going to take the arm up and over and across onto the body. You can also use uh, towels, etc., just to support underneath the arm. There's a couple I prepared earlier. So we're going to be pressing down onto the radius relative to the ulna, so kind of in this direction here. Again, we can apply the pressure from above. Some people like to use thumbs, again, you know, your thumbs can bend back and you've got to think about your longevity as a therapist so it's much nicer on your body if you're using different areas of your hand. We need to stabilize the ulna again nice to grip just underneath there. Feel for the head of the radius don't forget to just check it make sure you're on it. Lots of people will come onto the um, lateral epicondyle and think they're on the head of radius it's the next one down and then we can uh, either come at the proximal end of our metacarpal or we can come onto pisiform. I quite like proximal end here just for my own, for, for me as a therapist preference because my pisiform is quite bony and, and kind of it can be a little bit unpleasant for the patient whereas here it's a little bit thicker in tissue so I start to add a little bit of, of a softness to the patient so vary it according to your patient. So feeling for it, 
You can either come that way or that way. So I'm going to do it here. And then we start to apply our pressure coming down, testing the movement, move back off, and then we have our grade one, grade two, emphasize pulling off, grade three, coming into resistance, and grade four. You'll notice my fingers are also underneath the radius again, like I said before, so that I can feel the bone moving. For our longitudinal core dad, I mean down, we have the same setup, same position, feeling for proximal end of the radius. And you can either try and get your thumbs behind, so that you're in here. I've always found this one quite awkward, awkward to do. So just in behind there, and then applying a pressure down, so you're trying to sort of push your thumbs straight down. That does depend quite a lot on the strength of your thumb. Or we can try and get busy form in just behind it. Now this is awkward as well. Just in there, and then applying our technique coming down. You'll probably find this is the nut is the best for grip. It's just not a technique you want to do too often in a day. So applying your pressure down, performing the technique. And then longitudinal kefalad. We're going to apply two, two methods. One is through the wrist, where we hold onto the wrist, support the elbow, and we can feel the radius moving. And what we're going to do is apply a pressure where we radially deviate and then compress down through the wrist, testing the movement. And then we can perform our technique, so grade one. Grade two, grade three into resistance, and grade four. To be pressing through the wrist. The alternative is either to come again, like we did with the core dad, is up onto the radial styloid and apply the pressure straight down through from our thumbs this way or we can try and use either between the thena and hypothena or base of our metacarpal to apply the pressure down and through this way. So what I'm trying to do is that as my pressure here or yeah, this would be pitiful. Last techniques for the uh, elbow and forearm is passive accessories for the inferior radial arm joint. Now, longitudinal cord out and cafelad we've just seen, and they are the same because the radius moves up and down, um, and it can't do it any differently whether it's at either end because it is a solid bone. But then for AP and PA of the inferior radial joint, we can perform that down at this distal end. When we're performing the technique, the pressure is coming from here, from our um, proximal, uh, from our first metacarpal, and we're going to do this on both hands. You'll see that I'll have the thumbs extended, but that's just because there's nowhere else to put it. So as we apply our pressure, so this is the radius, I'm going to apply the pressure going from anterior to posterior, pushing down for my AP. The other hand is holding onto the radius and is effectively pulling up. The hard thing you'll find is as you try and do it, if you don't grip on both sides, is as you do it, you'll just get a lot of this happening. So you'll just get supination, pronation happening. So if we hold on and grip nice and tight, then perform our technique. So I'm going to apply my AP mobilization, which is kind of almost scooping it like that to stop it from rotating. Testing the range. And then we can perform an AP grade one, nice and small. 
grade two. You're kind of gripping tighter than you feel you need to to perform a one and a two because the actual movement you're doing doesn't have much resistance but you have to grip quite tight. Grade three into resistance and then grade four right towards the end of range. For the PA, so for PA going that way, the easiest way to do it is actually do an AP on the ulna and what it will force you to do is to pull up on the radial side. So same hand positions and then now we're just going to push down on our ulna which means we're going to have to pull up on our radius. So let's test in the movement. Grade one, grade two, grade three, Grade four. That concludes our mobilizations for the elbow and forearm.